Okay, we will call to order the Committee of the Whole for March 23rd. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded lands of the Mi'kmaq. That's where we hold our meeting. We have a record of attendance. Everyone's here. There's no absent with regrets. Any declarations of conflict of interest, anyone? Okay. And approval of agenda. Any additions or deletions? Go ahead. I'd just like to add um, Dr. Recruitment, uh, Community Navigator, please. Okay, so that is addition A. Okay, anybody else? Additions? Deletions? Good to go. Heather, you can turn your light off. Oh, then you. No problem. Okay, so. Okay, moved by Councillor Lesser and seconded by Deputy Mayor uh, to approve the agenda with the addition. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, we have a presentation. Meadowfields Playground Project. And Lori's here with her team. Yes, the team. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting us today. Um, <coughs> Um, my name is Lori McClay. I am a phys ed teacher at Meadowfields, and I'm also the committee chair for our playground project. I have with me today um, my colleague, Aslan Ettinger. She is also a phys ed teacher at the school, also a parent of one of our students, and she is on our PR committee. And I have Natalia Tate, who also has a, a child at the school and is our guidance counselor. And she is also on PR. So I don't like to travel alone. I will let Aslan speak next, and I'll be back. All right. Maybe. All right, so currently at the school, if you can see the image that we've brought with us today, the only thing that we have available for those students in grades three to five on our uh, playground side, where there is no playground, are currently just the four swings. We have 202 students in those grades who go out regularly for their recess and then for their lunchtime play. Uh, and they are pretty bored. They're not overly happy with what they have left available to them to use. And they are desperately looking for things to do. Now, in this next image, this is our ideal playground. Obviously not to scale, but the purpose being to make it a community-minded space because I'm sure most of you are well aware that Meadowfields is a community school and therefore the playground when it was there was being used by a multitude of people, not just the students who attended the building. We have after school programs like the Boys and Girls Club who are using those facilities as well as Yarmouth Rec, we have sports programs that come in through the summer to offer their soccer programs and things like that. And the space was being used by families to come and visit on weekends, to play with their kids while other things were happening. So we would like to see the space be uh, both accessible and inclusive. We know that by 2030, that is the goal of the province to have all of these play spaces to be able to be used by anyone and everyone who has access to them. And so we have things set up that we would like to see the playground equipment scattered around the space with accessible pathways throughout so that people uh, with different mobility issues uh, would be able to access the different parts of the playground as well. We would love to see a paved pathway around the outside so that parents could walk or jog uh, while their children are playing. Uh, we also would love to see additions with our outdoor classroom space out there as well as some beautiful trees some picnic tables, benches, things like that. And of course, we'd also have our donor wall there as we've collected donations thus far through our playground project. Okay, so I know uh, it's been mentioned before, can we do this in phases? Absolutely, as long as we can do it. <laughs> Let's do it however we can. Uh, so. What makes the most sense to us is phase one being the equipment. Getting the equipment in the ground so that the students have um, some, some equipment to use, to be active, uh, to keep them out of trouble. <laughs> 
but that is the most costly. So phase one is the high, the high numbers. We are looking at, we were just actually trying to sort out some of that today because the uh, quotes seem to change the longer we, we wait. And uh, so we are already over 300,000 for phase one um, with the uh, current quotes that we have. And then phase two, looking for deeper into the walking track, accessibility trails throughout the uh, playground, as you saw in the earlier sketch. And then phase three being the outdoor classroom. We have indoor classrooms. We can wait for the outdoor. <laughs> they can sit on the ground. <laughs> and then for phase four, making everything real pretty. Um, so when we switch over and look at our actual budget, um, keeping in mind that these are all estimated costs, uh, removals, it's quite high. Some of that has already been done, and we did have an in-kind donation from Nick Hurlebert. Uh, he has removed some of that, so that price, some of that cost is already cut down. Site preparation, trees, trail, those are all really rough estimates. The place structures being the, the largest one that we already talked about, um, that number comes from the quotations that we've received from the companies. Um, we just took the estimate. We took the, the average of those. Um, the installation, that's pretty solid throughout. It's a, a big number, but we need to have it done right for our uh, safety and, and uh, safety standards. Uh, a lot of the others, the brochures, postcards, things like that that you have in your hands today. Those things uh, we have had done as well as a way to, to get, our, get the word out and most other things you, you would recognize on, on other budgets as well um, that you've seen before. Does anybody have any questions there? I'm thinking that might be a space where I should pause. <laughs> Anyone? Or can good, we do Good that? so far. Good so far, perfect. We will carry on. Uh, so where have we applied? What have we already done? Uh, note at the top, this list is ongoing. Some of this, some of these have already been, um, we've already been told, not today. <laughs> some we've said, try, they've said try again later. Um, the ones that, that we have received, you will see later in revenue. And some of them we're just working on completing at, at this time. So... Uh, one that that we accidentally left off the list is 100 Guys Who Care. So I apologize to them for having left them off there. We, we did apply there as well. So as you can see, we're busy filling out applications, grant applications. Uh, moving on, school fundraisers. Natalia. Yep. Um, so for our school fundraisers, we have been trying to have a variety of different fundraisers, um, trying to appeal to different groups, trying to get the word out through as many different organizations and to as many different communities as we can. So some of these are really school-based, our hanging baskets, our catalog sales, are our students going out and selling to family members, friends, and whatnot. But then we've done some larger community events as well, such as our yard sale um, that was open to anyone in Yarmouth County, not necessarily just our students out fundraising. Um, our fun nights, for example, are organized by our school staff. They are offering events for the students. Students come in, pay a cover to come in for the evening. Um, parents use it as like a, a babysitting service. You drop your kids off, they play. So there's a variety of different activities there that we have done. Um, we also, not on this list, just because it was last night, we did a paint night with Tiffany Barrett from Digby that brought in almost another $950. So our total right now that we have fundraised through the school is sitting at $35,308.87. That's including the total from last night. So this was up to date until nine o'clock last night when we <laughs> finished our paint night. Um, so what we, did I go backwards? No, I went forwards. What we currently have, so our school fundraising, um, our community donations right now, we are up to just over 33,000 from local businesses, individuals, families, um, donating various, whether it's donating 
goods that we've used for, say, our silent auction, or whether it's donating funds. Um, In-kind donation, as Laurie mentioned, Nick Hurlbert removed the equipment um, that was deemed unsafe and cordoned off, and that was an in-kind donation. Um, Walmart community giving donation was $1,000. TD Friends of the Environment was a $7,000 grant um, that we received last spring. Acadia First Nations grant for $2,500. So with fundraising and community donations, we are sitting at just over $78,000 right now. Um, for our fundraisers, we are attempting at this point to do between two and three a month. Um, that is dependent on volunteers, um, what else we have going on at the time, school availability. It's, it's difficult to manage sometimes with three of us that are trying to get report cards done and stuff as well. So our fundraising committee often pitches and then takes over some of what they're doing. So we had our paint night last night. Um, upcoming during our parent teacher next week, we have a student art auction where students have created artwork that they are auctioning off, hopefully, to their parents. Um, we have a Mother's Day quilt raffle coming up. We have a car rally scheduled in April. We are redoing our fun nights where the students pay the cover to come in. We're doing those again in the spring. Um, there's a VIP dinner that's being planned outside of our school that we are supporting. Um, we are doing another yard sale, a meet and smoker raffle, and skating with the Mariners. We have looked ahead to September to schedule that in. So again, a variety of different events trying to appeal to as many people as possible. Okay, so how can you help? Uh, of course, we would love for you to support and spread the news about our project and also, you know, if you can, support our school fundraisers. Come on out, have some fun. And money. Money, money, money. <laughs> um, and I know any amount, any amount that you can give would, would be greatly appreciated. I know we have had numbers of 75,000 tossed around. We've had numbers of 50,000 tossed around. We, we can use whatever whatever anybody can can offer. Um, as you can see, our, our fundraisers, we're, we're going anywhere from $100 to $5,000. So, um, yeah, we're not going to turn anything down. I, I was always told, ask, ask for something big, be lofty, ask, reach for the stars, and then uh, hope for the best. So that's where we're going with that. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity once again. And there's my contact information where if you wanted to speak with somebody else, I could certainly get you in touch. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Dares. Thank you. Could you tell me when your fundraising actually started? We? Just approximately. Yeah. What was our <clears throat> first thing uh, on the list? list? We did our painting baskets last spring. Yes, okay, last so spring. We started, I think this kind of came to light was sometime it? after Christmas last year that we really realized how much of an endeavor yes. this was going to be and started okay. allotting funds from various school events toward this. So the baskets would have been April, May, April, May. Uh, last well, year. Well, first let me say I applaud your efforts at fundraising. It's a very ambitious schedule. Thank I'm you. looking at this. I think you've held 17 events already and nine on the, on the calendar. So right. um, I know I've previously commented that I don't think you're going to be able to get, get this project finished doing bake sales. And I think that's proven here today. If right. you've been at this for almost a year and you've got 78,000. Especially since we're um, not allowed to do bake sales. And <laughs> right? The, the Too much sugar. <laughs> the volunteer effort uh, is, is also commendable, so thank, thank you. you. Um, it, it's obvious, I think, to me that there has to be some significant donations made before, if you intend to meet that target date of September of next year. So good luck. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Deputy. <clears throat> uh, one, of the, one of my favorite things is when people come to ask money, they've already did their work. So kudos to you guys to not just come and say, you know, give us something. It's shown here that you're putting in the effort. So to me, it's, it's a lot easier to give to people who are also working together to do it. So kudos to you. And as Gil said, almost $80,000 in the last year. Yes. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So uh, thank you. I've got an idea for a, a ball tournament for you that I might end up pitching. Perfect. It's been ten to $15,000 for most places that kind of went down. Oh, but, excellent. Yeah, congratulations. And uh, I'm sure eventually we'll, we'll step up and do what okay. we can. So thank you. Yeah, so anybody else? Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to say I love that you're doing all the events. I know it's hard. Are the kids involved? Oh, yes. Okay, so, so <laughs> I'm, right, I'm sitting here saying 
if we could get back even just a little bit, not $400,000 worth, but know, if right? we could get back a little bit to where we used to be, where we taught the kids, it's just not put your hand out and there it is. And so the message to the kids, like I got goosebumps when you were saying, it's just the way my head works, right? Um, I got goosebumps when you were saying we did all these events and you were listing them and I'm thinking, I hope the kids see this and I hope, and I know the message is this, that, that the message is, we're going to work for this and we're going to have the greatest playground ever. And, and like, that's a life skill on its own. That's, that's huge. I don't know if it was mentioned in the first presentation or not, but the students designed the playground. Yeah. We sat down, we yeah. have an active student council yeah, uh, through our health promoting schools yeah. committee. And, and uh, so we sat down with our students and they went back to their classmates. They designed the playground. Yeah. We reached out to the, the contractors mm -hmm. and they sent us their prices for those specific pieces. Now there's some things like hockey rinks and things like mm -hmm. that that we couldn't do but of course <laughs> yeah. zip line is iffy you know that kind of thing but, um, but they understand that and then we meet with them regularly and we ask them okay what are we going to do next what are we going yeah. to do next and even next week we have a student art auction so they've been busily working in yeah. their classrooms and some local artists have been yeah. visiting the school trying to help them uh, create even more that's oh, awesome yes, and we're working on an updated video as well so Wow, the, and the, the like what a great, um, I just think it's a great tool. I think it's a great tool and it teaches them uh, civics. It teaches them you, you just, you have to earn things. This is the way the system works and to Steve's point, to the deputy's point, like, um, you know, we, we do, we want to see that people are, are, are doing the work. We obviously see that. I mean, <laughs> more, yes. we, we more than see that. But it's it's appreciated, and and I you know I do a lot of speaking on um, community building and stuff throughout the the country, and I use the splash park every time, and they that got built and it got built quickly because it was the community behind it. Right. So right. so um, three cheers. I'd say stand up and cheer, but everybody didn't go to Acadia. <laughs> <laughs> so good good stuff. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and I want to I, I want to congratulate you on the community capacity building that you're doing in this yeah. project because I think that equally as important as the playground itself is the opportunity that this provides the community to engage and become <coughs> part of their school community. So I just think it's a a, a fabulous demonstration of of what's possible when you know small things become big things and you start a little ball and you roll it down the hill and eventually you just get this masterpiece so I want to congratulate you for that thank you um, I also have some questions sure. <laughs> because as you know as as the fiduciary responsible for taxpayer money in the town of Yarmouth there's questions that I have that I just I'm I I I have not had sufficiently answered to my satisfaction. So I just, I need to know, number one, um, who governs the activities on the school grounds? Like it's a community school, you said. But it, so it will be owned by the, the Tri-County Regional Education Center. Okay, right. so that's the owner. Right. And, and how do you use facility, how do you use the facilities in, in on the school grounds do it just anybody come in and use them or do they have to be booked or what's what's okay. how does so, that work so during the school day um, it's shut down to the public right and okay. it's for student use only or school use only yeah. I should say sometimes we see adults on swings and that's yeah. okay <laughs> um, so there's a large amount of free play during recess and lunch hours and things like that but with uh, Aslan and I both being phys ed teachers, we make use of the space as well. Right. Uh, as soon as um, the Susan school bell exists. rings at 2.15, um, the uh, after school program takes over. Okay. And they have use of both sides of the school uh, for both playgrounds. At this point, obviously, they're not doing much on the other side, so this, the soccer field and different things are in use. Um, and that is run through the Boys and Girls Club, right? Yes. yes. Right. Boys and Girls Club. And then in the evenings, um, well, in the school, Yarmouth Recreation takes over. And they also take over in the summertime. Yeah. 
So all of their programming, programming is in our space on our <laughs> property. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so there is public access at some point to those playground facilities mm -hmm. for, for children and parents in that in that particular area, yeah, no, which, the students, part the of which leave. is in the town of Yarmouth. Yes. Part of which is in the town of Yarmouth. So can you explain to me who is going to be responsible for the maintenance of, of, of this facility after it's built? So once the money has been raised for the capital costs of the project, how, what is the expectation for how it will be maintained in the future? So that falls on the school. Right. Okay. And uh, in part, the Tri-County Regional Education Yeah, Center. Operations Committee. Okay. And so is there uh, an arrangement with the Tri-County Education Center? Like, are you communicating with them oh, about yes. how that's going to be? Yes. Jamie Boudreaux is, is our contact at the, okay. at the board, and he, uh, he comes to all of our meetings as well. Great. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. All right. And so... Um, yeah, I think that, that pretty much covers it. I just, you know, I, I wish you really, I, I think you got the town's support when you were here in the spring. I mean, unequivocally, we understand the importance of it. Mm -hmm. I think that what we are trying to sort through is, um, you know, how we can, how we can um, rationalize or justify the taxpayers' dollars going sure. in and to what extent and all of this. So, the, so Absolutely. you've been very helpful this afternoon and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you You're very, very much. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Anyone else? Go ahead, uh, CAO, and then Great. Derek. Thank you. So just to, if, <coughs> to clarify, so on the maintenance side, so if you have a broken swing, the swing is broken, it's, it's unrepairable, is it on the school to replace that swing or is it on the... Center for Education, or is it? Are we now down one swing in perpetuity? Uh, the way that I see that happening is the school reaches out to the Tri County <laughs> Center for Education to see if they will assist, and if not, the school will cover that. Right. We will attempt to. <laughs> right, and that's probably why we have no playground now, is because right. they're not in the business. They're in the business of maintaining until it's broken. Right. Then they're in the business of removal. So we can always ask for help, but if not, we end up yeah. having another paint night. <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah. Um, the only other comment, Your Worship, is I thought mm -hmm. I heard uh, Natalia say meat and smoker raffle. Yeah. Okay. Come like see a, me. A side of yeah, a I know side what it is. Come see me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want uh, tickets or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Yes, a meat and smoker. Um, one of our staff members has gotten donations for that, and that was going to be one of our raffles that we did this spring. And we say meat because you get to choose what yeah. kind. What type of meat? Beef, lamb, pork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, counselor. Uh, thank you for the presentation, and it's nice to see all three of you. I know each of you in different ways, and yes. Laura and I went to school together, and she was always the in the fitness participant, whatever. <laughs> she was always the the platinum winner, and I was always one of the bronze. <laughs> um, I was jealous of that, but uh, and Natalia coached my daughter in volleyball, and Aslan worked and I worked together at uh, Yarmouth High as well. So uh, kudos to you guys for the work you're doing. Um, and like Bell said, I think you would have you have support of the town for sure. Um, oh, I say, well, I say for sure from from my my perspective. Um, I guess my question is, and I know it's I know it's maybe not an answer you can give, but what are what are your thoughts now around what you would be looking for um, in terms of money from the town? Like, if you if ideally if you were to get certain amounts from each organization, what would you see the town being? Uh, like a reasonable contribution. I don't know if you can answer that or if you even want to answer oh, that. Like I said earlier, I could reach for the stars and ask for a lot, you know, 400,000 would be lovely. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, 50 would be lovely. And if the uh, municipality stepped up as well with 50,000, um, then that would certainly get us really close to the third um, 
that we were hoping for from government. We we're hoping yep. to raise a third on our own at the school level. We're looking for a third from grants and then a third from government is what we would like in an the ideal, ideal world, yeah. world. That's the best funding model. Like, and, and the Splash Park is definitely evidence that that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to answer the CAL's question, um, in my experience, operations has been very good at uh, coming in and help fix uh, problems that occur. But in education, the money is spent in the classroom as opposed to, you know, bleachers and uh, playground equipment and stuff. But um, I, I've found them very good yeah. to, to deal with. And I think, I think we would have support from operations to help maintain things. Although I don't know if they would ever want to say it completely that, you know, they fully support it at this point. I think they've, they've been showing that they, they do support it. Thank you. Thanks. Your Worship, if I, if I could respond, I didn't want to sound like I was down on operations at all at the school board. I've heard some wonderful things oh, out, of, out of there, yeah. particularly lately. So, uh, yeah. um, no, that, that just for clarification on that point, that I know mm -hmm. their budget is limited mm -hmm. on playgrounds, and, and you know, when you, when you have, when you're investing $400,000 and working hard for every dollar, um, you know, that's, that's actually easier and trying to raise maintenance money, right? So that's that's going to be the real challenge going forward is to maintain it once you have that wonderful playground. There. We have operations staff at our school quite regularly, and they are really good at coming in with manpower. Um, finances are, are completely different. So if they can fix it, they'll be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But when we're asking for, yeah, replacements and, and financial assistance, that's that's a completely different ballgame. Um, it's just not... What they have budgeted. Yeah, they need. Yeah, budget needs to change. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like it, yes. to me, this this is not a. It's a playground to the kids, but but to the adults, this I I think how well they they perform in the classroom is directly proportional to the outside time that they have. That that they've got fresh air and they feel safe and they. They build community among each other and, and, and all those big things. So somebody's missing that. Yes, absolutely. Um, yep. So anyway, uh, and I say that respectfully because there's a lot of things on the table, but I, yeah. just, I just don't get it. So, okay, good. So we don't make decisions today, but I think we're, I think we're good if there's no more questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you again for having us. Okay. So down to the CAO's report. Um, anything for the CAO there? So, uh, oh, sorry, I got a couple okay. too. Yeah. Just one quick question. Um, in regards to the sign, the welcoming sign on Forest Street, um, do you think that'll be in place before the ferry operation begins? I, I know staff are working on that, and uh, in an ideal world, the answer to that would be yes. Uh, so we're trying to make it an ideal world. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so that that initiative started with with changing the wording, freshening mm -hmm. it up. It turned into a project of looking at the structural integrity and doing some work there. And once that was done, I think we kind of let the other part slide. But we're back on it, and there's some good ideas. Uh, okay. On that right now. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say down on uh, 3 9 2023, like the, the recreation intermunicipal agreement, that letter has gone out. Just, I just want um, council to know that. We did, we did send that out. Um, and there was something else on here. I can't remember. That was done, but yep, good. Anything else? Perfect. Okay, fire department, the chief's here. Anything, is he? Yeah, he is. Go ahead there, uh, counselor. Hey, chief, I'll let you come up. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, this, this is my question, but I, I was talking to one of the volunteers yesterday and he mentioned the fact that uh, um, grass fires have already started, so it must truly be spring. Uh, spring has arrived. Yeah, yeah, that's sorry to hear that. I really am. Um, 
new volunteers. Uh, how's, how's the volunteer situation? I see you have some, some volunteers. Yeah, least. I've got some prospects. Um, I've got uh, a local RCP officer that's interested in joining. Uh, we're in the midst of the process. I've got an application on my desk and I've handed two more out. So it's actually uh, starting off pretty busy early in the year. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention, and it's happening at the, the fire hall actually, is we're, we're doing a, uh, an immigration newcomer meet your new neighbor event, yeah. uh, which is happening on Saturday. Um, and I wanted to mention to you that if, if you're interested to, to have someone come up or you or one of the volunteers and, and talk to some of the newcomers perhaps about uh, the, uh, the possibility perhaps of, of yeah. volunteering. Um, I was aware of it. Uh spoke with Stuart a little bit about it. Um, we're going to, at the very least, put uh, some fire prevention materials there for the kids because there will be a bunch of little ones running around. And I'm going to make an appearance, I think. Um, I didn't want to hang around too much because they didn't want to kind of steal their event. But uh, we'll be in and out. <coughs> okay. Sure, yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention is something I found out while I was up there. We were doing some preparation for it yesterday up at the fire hall. Uh, I understand there's going to be some training happening pretty much at the same time, and it's great to see that training being done. It's going to be really cool to watch it from upstairs, may I add, yeah. but it's, it's great to see you making good use of that facility. You, you'll see the culmination of uh, some hard work of a bunch of uh, firefighters. Like we, We're doing some training from outside departments now, so they, they, they give it, they, we, we charge them a, a, a fee to, to provide some service as well as we're training uh, five of our own, I think, are, are finishing up their, their course. So it's the culmination of the number of months of work they put in into what we call Fire Control Weekend. So it'll be two days of uh, vehicle fires, uh, building fires, basement fires, uh, dumpster fires, you know, all those sorts of things. So we actually had, we had to get one of the vehicles that we have up there already cut up, out back, had to get a drug over in the corner so we didn't end up with getting ashes on customers' vehicles. So we're thinking a little bit. That's a, it's a great thing. It really is. And to have that here, kudos to you and, and to the department for, you know, planning that and, and making it a reality. It's, it's an important part of yeah. what you do. We've, we've come a long way. I mean, you know, we, we were in a good place before, but we're definitely, uh, you know, we want to keep improving. Um, you know, there's some pretty big capital money that has been allotted to us this year, um, and they're going to go to some very good use. Uh, we're going to put a hydrant into the back of the by the right close to the building. Uh, that makes it easier for us to access uh, when we're doing fire control activities. Uh, we're paving the back parking lot because as you can tell, that parking lot is in pretty just, you know, a pretty high level of disrepair. Uh, it's just a very old piece of asphalt. So we're getting that done and a few other projects around the building, more, more uh, training equipment, more uh, trainers. Uh, we're building up some more props, uh, more ladders for the building. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot happening. We're gonna tentatively, we're gonna be building an outdoor classroom uh, this year we're turning what's left of the old training tower we had to decommission uh, the first floor of that's going to become an outdoor classroom uh, so that when firefighters are, are doing training they've got a place to do like rehab and rest and, and we also will have a whiteboard out there and be able to you know do some some uh, discussions over evolutions excellent so, yeah. thank you chief thank you go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just one question chief uh, so the training that you're and uh, congratulations on that i i grew up in dartmouth and had a lot of family involved in the maritime or the nova scotia fire training facility in waverly and it's nice to see something happening locally instead of yeah. tra sending people off to Thank be you. trained um so the, the mutual aid departments also take part of that training is that yep that's correct uh, some of our local departments are taking this level one course we have now um can't think of the exact names of them, unfortunately, but the, our local mutual aid departments, there's three of them that are, that are in the course with us as well with us. Yeah. Um, Good. Thank and you. I spoke about previously, about, you mentioned about the Nova Scotia Firefighter School. Um, we're, we're getting close, closer to having a, a tentative deal with the school to be a satellite for the Nova Scotia Firefighter School. So that'll be big for the center of the province. We'll be able to uh, really expand what we do and help the communities in our outlying departments. Our, our goal is to get everybody you know, on the same page, so to speak. You know, we, we've been the flagship for a long time, and I'm very mm -hmm. proud of that. But we want to, you know, help everybody else. Not that they're not very good at what they do, but we'd like to get everybody on the same page. Yeah. No, you can't, can't underestimate the value of training, so thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. Good staff. Thank you. Anything else for the chief? I would love, I mean, I don't know what this, the, uh, 
I don't know how Saturday's being run. I'll be there. But um, it, it would be really nice when you are there, even if you're there for 10 minutes, just, just the... the I'll ask uh, the MC. Who are you, the MC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because I've done newcomers. I, I do them, the ones at NSCC all the time, and they're always looking for, how do I serve the community? Yeah. And every newcomer wants to do that because they're so thankful to be here. A lot of our new uh, volunteers are newcomers. There you and, go. And they come with the, uh, the want to give back. They all express an interest of and, and being very grateful to, to, to live here and, and work here. And exactly. they want to all give back. So yeah. it's, we're, we're very fortunate for yeah. sure. All right. Go ahead, Wade. Sorry. I just want to mention that, yeah, that it's, a, it's really a great thing to have you there. And I certainly will bring you up and, uh, and have you speak briefly if you, if you wish to, or yeah, if you have sure. any, anything that you can ha pass out, because we, yeah. we have this whole kind of a, a greeting folder filled with different things. But ultimately, when this, this one, we didn't want to confuse things and make it muddled, because nope. we wanted this to be a welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at some point, I really want to see, and it's, it's one of my goals within the next while, perhaps in the fall, to do uh, an immigration piece as a showcase where you bring in newcomers and offer them opportunities like this and, and inform them on yeah, what recreational there. opportunities yeah. there are when it comes to volunteering, yeah. almost a volunteering showcase. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we need to see that. Perhaps we can do that at the fire hall yeah, at some point. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, we as, as really you know, like homegrown that. Canadians, I find we've, we've, a lot of us, myself included, we've become complacent. And, and a lot of the immigrants that move here, you know, they're, they're everything but, and they're you know they, they're a breath of fresh air for everybody in, in the facility. They're, they they talk about it all the time. The guys and the girls, how you know the perspective is so different. So you, it, it does. It helps us a lot. <laughs> when you know what you had and you know what you have, yeah, two two yeah. Diff, two different things. And you yeah. could have been here um, for generations, but it's still in your blood. That's right. It's, it's, it's still in the yeah. blood. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll notice while I'm standing here that there's there's two reports. There was a bit of a an error last month, uh, computer-wise, and my report must you must have looked at it last month and said this guy's gone insane because that wasn't my actual report that got put there. So. We actually think that every month, but well, I'm glad <laughs> it's, it's, I'm staying consistent. Then <laughs> we're trying to be kind. <laughs> at least I'm consistent. Thanks. We appreciate you. Ah. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Oh, my dear. Okay. Operational services, and that's Chad. Um, Chad's not here, so anything you need for Chad, or if you wanted to ask Jeff a question, then go ahead. Otherwise, we can find Chad for it. Go ahead, Counselor. Um, well, actually, I was going to ask Chad if they've received any, if he'd received any complaints about the um, drop-off and pick-up times at the YES school on Brunswick Street, because uh, particularly during any inclement weather, They've got cars stopped on both sides of the street and kids running back and forth, coming up from between cars. And I know that there's no parking signs there, but they're totally ignored. Um, and I wonder if there should be like at least one side of the road made no stopping. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's really quite dangerous to see these little kids running out from between cars and crossing the street. So um, uh, is that for Chad? Is that for police advisory? Is it for both? Okay. I will leave it with the... CAO, thank you. Yeah. yeah make a note. Make a note. I don't, I don't think if they're not listening to no parking, no stopping isn't going to work either. <laughs> but you, know, you never know. No, it, no, I'm just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild what uh, people will let their kids run out in front of. Uh, Councillor Heather. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I was wanted, just wanted to comment on the sidewalk snow removal debris i guess that has been left behind from the from the s snow removal that occurred a few weeks ago um there certainly has been a lot of sod overturned and and left but i did see the guys out yesterday i was really happy to see them and spoke to them and they were said that they their plan was to go throughout the town and and uh repair um the damage that had that had been done, but certainly it was uh, walking. It's quite shocking. <laughs> um, and so I guess my other question with that is, 
because I know I spoke about this a year ago at the table, was edging of our sidewalks. And would edging help prevent some of that pushback that has occurred? Because I know on my front lawn, that's what was pushed back, was what's overgrown onto the sidewalks. And, and, and so now we're having to send our guys out to repair. And if edging had occurred, would that be of any benefit, I guess, is my question. You don't know about edging? <clears throat> Go ahead there, Deputy. Uh, very happy to see that work being done down on Water Street. I know a lot of those bushes and stuff down around, you know, Sweeney's and whatnot were sticking up in the, the last three or four days. I've noticed they've been down there, and what a difference it's already made in just a few days they're doing it. So just kudos to Chad and the crew for cleaning that up. I know that was a complaint from some of the citizens when they were walking in the summer. I mean, it can't really be helped, obviously, because, you know, it just grows. And some natural beauty is always nice, but I, I think it's nice to clean that up a little bit. And yeah, just good to see. Good stuff. Go ahead. Just, I guess it's just a question. I hadn't realized that that was actually occurring right now, but is that the rose bushes and, and stuff? Yeah, so that's been an initiative of Communities in Bloom. And as a, as a um, um, part of the report from the judges was to, every year has been to get rid of those rose bushes. they have literally been a thorn in our side, so it was time to start to address them. And, okay, thanks. Good. Okay, uh, planning and economic development. So Natalie's here and she has somebody to introduce us to, I can tell. Hi everyone, uh, Your Worship. I'd like to introduce Jade Bloom. Jade started with us this Tuesday as the new uh, bylaw enforcement officer. So I'll, she's gonna shy. say, let's all hold hands and do a thankful dance. <laughs> she, she's okay with claps. Woo! <laughs> so over the next three weeks, Jade will start, she's doing some uh, training, getting orientation, so she's not at full speed right now. Has to learn some of our systems, review bylaws, but is handling some complaints with the support of other staff members. So uh, if you see her around, just wave and smile and we'll, we'll get her done, right? As your worship says, so thank you, Jade. <laughs> Uh, if there are any other questions on my report, I'm, I'm happy I to I share. um I met I met Jade this week. <laughs> we had quite a conversation. I won't be parking anywhere I shouldn't. <laughs> I won't drop any garbage. My house will be looked after. I'm just saying because I wouldn't want to mess with you. And I, w and I was warned, uh, I warned, I was encouraged not to give a list of 500. <laughs> ah, it's hard this time of year because everything looks, looks awful. So, you know, it's, uh, it's good. We're just glad you're here. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, just, I guess, one question, or no, actually two comments, I guess. Um, the Accessibility Committee uh, at the last meeting had a presentation from uh, the students that you have doing their work placements uh, from TAP, um, and it was it was refreshing to see um, a couple of young people in the community looking at uh, building an interactive map um, of accessibility in, in the community. Um, so kudos to them and for you guys for accepting them um, as students. And the other one just on the facade um, and mural program and how great the downtown's looking right now and we were in, uh, over March break, we were in the downtown, like Spring Garden Road area uh, with some international students and they said, you know, this is kind of nice what they're doing here. And it, they, they commented, they're trying to mimic what we're doing in Yarmouth. Um, like they, you know, they have benches and that kind of stuff sitting there, but um, what we're doing in Yarmouth, I think is, is quite unique. Um, and I know it's not connected directly with this, but uh, for anybody out watching or, um, I encourage you to go see the Maude Lewis presentation and it's quite, it's quite interesting to see that happen in, in Yarmouth and when I was in Campeche, Mexico, um, they have a whole, a whole side of a street, um, probably like a block and a half um, of something happening there. It's the history, of, the history of Campeche and the pirate ships coming in and big speakers and that kind of thing. Um, and it would be neat you know, to look at down the road of doing something similar on the side of Town Hall, 
you know, giving the history of it. I know these machines are very expensive, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows the answer of if the machine is owned maybe by the chamber or if it's being rented. It's actually a firm uh, that they've contracted that that's their specialty, and they do it uh, around the province, actually around the Atlantic provinces. So. A big thank you to the Yarmouth Chamber for for getting that organized and pulled together. But it is a third party that. So they don't. They won't. The machine's only here for a period of time. Yeah, it's uh, okay. for a month. So I think okay. it's going up to Easter. Uh, the illumination project. They're very expensive, but they're. It's what I, a I nice addition the cost, to the. But I, I could certainly find out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay, engineering. And our engineer is here. Any questions? Go ahead. Uh, yes. Demir, just a quick, quick question. You, uh, I think in your report you indicate that the tenders for the Harrington Avenue sidewalk closed on March 21st. Is that yes, correct? Yes, it did. And was there, like, is there going to be a, 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 an award to a company, or where was that? We're just still check, double checking the math and reviewing the results and uh, just having some discussions internally about that. I think Jeff might be in a better position to make a further statement. Um, I guess the thing to say at this point is that we're a bit surprised with the tender results. Uh, they're uh, well in excess of the available budget and so we're, and we've had good explanation from a third party firm in terms of why that probably is. Uh, the challenge is, in order to bring a recommendation forward, is we have to figure out what to recommend in terms of an adjustment to have the money to do to do the work. So, uh, as you point out, this just closed, and uh, so we're we're going to figure it out, and uh, maybe by the council meeting in, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Go ahead, deputy. Uh, there was three people who came down from Dell today. And met earlier with Demario and them about the watershed, and, and uh, they seemed very um, happy to be here, I guess, and uh, had a lot of good things to say about Yarmouth, so I was just wondering if you wanted to speak to how things went at, at your little tour around, or how, what they thought, I guess, after the meeting. Uh, yeah, no, it was a very good meeting, uh, Steve, you know, as always, does his, his uh, awesome thing, and we appreciate that, and so Dalhousie came down as a part of the Lake George uh, Watershed Committee, um, I guess, partnership with and CERC and Dalhousie and the Acadia First Nations. And essentially what's gonna happen is that they're gonna update our source water protection plan and our regulations, and that's extremely important. As you know, our water, our Lake George is very important to us. And uh, we went out there and we did a tour at the plant with Rob and we looked around the, uh, the dam and so they were very happy and excited and hopefully they'll be back in May to start the real groundwork. Awesome, go ahead. Just one last thing, Demario. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm very pleased to hear you were chosen to serve on the uh, committee for the project committee for the Mariner Center. Yes, yes, and, I was. Uh, and thank you for that. Uh, you're just exactly what they need on that committee. Thank you, Gil. It's going to be a fun and exciting challenge. It's going to be a number of years, but I'm looking forward to it. Good stuff. Okay. Good. Thank you. Engineering and finance. Okay, finance and Jerry's here. Any questions for Jerry? Or, and Jerry, anything you need to share with us that's good news? Good news? <laughs> we don't I'll want share, the bad I'll news. Share some, uh, work for oh, did I not? Oh, that's right. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, nothing for Jerry? Oh. Yeah, no, we've been uh, um, getting prepared, working on our budget, um, but also also just the assessments and starting to get organized around, as everyone knows, next month we'll be cranking out some tax bills again. So that's kind of been our focus is year-end budgeting and that. Uh, I've also been sidetracked and pulled away with the Mariner Center, so as we know, um, Come April 1st, the Mariner Center will be doing their accounting function on their own. So I've been helping them with the transition on that and making sure that they have all the resources and access to our systems and files that they need. So all that stuff's been ongoing. So it's been a busy time. So I just give you a quick update there. 
Good. Anything okay. else? Thank you. Okay, and recreation? It's not here. Okay. Jurisdictional scan. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is there supposed to be a report attached to that? Like it, nope. it's not coming up. I don't know. If... Nope, nothing oh. attached. Oh. There's, there's, there's supposed to be a report, I think, but okay. it's, it's not attached. Uh, jurisdictional scan license bylaw fees. Thank you. I have to adjust it from Mr. DeMaria. Your Worship and Council, I prepared uh, this report based on the last Committee of the Whole's request for staff to review uh, other jurisdictions with regards to what license fees they charge uh, for events or other events on private land. Uh, so what I've identified in this report is uh, jurisdictions uh, that don't have any charges and those that do in the breakdown of that so happy to answer any questions You'll notice. I did not make any recommendations as this was just a fact-finding at this point Okay, any questions there for Natalie we just want to take a peek or I guess I don't have questions, but I do have a comment that in looking at the comparison, I, I think we're a little bit on the high side, and I do think that we need to look a little harder at, uh, at what we're doing, perhaps with vending events and, and, and such, because I, it's, it's a matter of trying to make sense of exactly how they lie within each other, but uh, I think we're a little bit on the high side, so I think it is something that needs to be looked at. Okay, anybody else? Go ahead, CAO. Yep, so the question really is what do you want to achieve? Right, so we, we had a complaint about the bylaw and how it, how it was confusing and how it uh, seemed to um, impose a, an unreasonable expense. And again, that was an opinion, an unreasonable or large expense on on a uh, event company that was just simply trying to create activity in the community through events that sometimes were of a commercial nature and you know those things are good for the community um, the question is whether or not you know what are we trying to achieve when we when we charge these additional fees and I would say that back when many some of these fees were, were introduced I won't say many some of these fees were introduced it was listening to businesses that uh, pay taxes, have, have property and pay taxes, seeing uh, transient <coughs> um, businesses come in at opportune times, whether that's summer or just before Christmas or whatnot, and uh, carrying on a retail trade for a short period of time or some form of trade for a short period of time and taking the money out of the community. And the taxpaying business is feeling that that there's something doesn't feel right about that. Again, that's that that's that was an opinion, and I'm, I'm I've heard that myself, um, not recently, but I've heard it. Um, and I think this bylaw, the intent was to try to, in, in some ways, was to try to address that. I haven't heard that complaint in a long time. Uh, some of you will remember, probably all of you will remember times when we've had people doing vending in the streets in Yarmouth from, from uh, um, you know, street vendor carts or, or trailers or whatnot. You don't see that anymore uh, we, we, because we, we imposed a fee for the same reason. And so sometimes to try to even the playing field, what you actually do is, is, is strangle, the, strangle it out of existence. And, you know, I would really question... You know, what do you want to do here? Do you want to, you know, if you view these fees as high, um, maybe we lower the fees. If you, if you think that we maybe don't need to license door-to-door uh, -door peddlers or, or businesses, transient or otherwise, operating, I'll give you an example, at, at, the, at the convention center. Uh, the convention center 
the owners of that pay property taxes to the town to carry on a business. And the convention center, by its nature, uh, sometimes is going to have events that, that are commercial in nature. And we are charging an additional fee for them to actually use the space that we're taxing. So it, it does appear, in some ways, if you look at it that way, like we're kind of double dipping on that. And so, and I think that's the perspective of the, of the complainant. Uh, um, what we need is direction, right? We can write this, we can recommend rescind this, we can, we can do anything you want um, if we know what you want to achieve in the end. Um, so, so that's where we need clarity. And this just sort of show, this report kind of shows you different communities have different takes on, on this issue, and some of them have no fees, no bylaw, and that says that they're they're stepping back and letting letting business do do what it is they want to do on private property. Go ahead. Okay, so a lot there. Um, and so I can only answer for myself. I can't answer for council. Um, so you can take whatever I have to say with the grain of salt that it just rightfully deserves. But for example, you know, you, you just mentioned the fact that, you know, we have, we have convention center, we have a Mariner center, uh, we have a convention center across the road here. Um, there's no daily event fee for vending events. There's only a monthly fee. Maybe there should be a daily fee or, you know, a smaller one. You know, the, the $50 that I see um, in Bridgewater seems very reasonable. In Halifax, I don't even have one. But I do see the fact that, you know, we could use a, an overall fee. You don't charge every vendor $50. You, you charge whomever organizes it the $50 to, to put the thing together. That's one. That's, and again, my humble opinion. Food trucks and trailers, $200 a month seems perfectly reasonable if somebody's moving in there and is going to be there for a month. We have restaurants, they pay property tax. Seems perfectly reasonable. However, what would happen, and this is a question, a specific question. Say, for example, I wanted to do a food truck weekend and bring food trucks from away. How would you charge? How would you do that? There's no round way to do that uh, because there's a $200 monthly fee. Like, perhaps that should be considered. Like, if, if somebody's down for a day, um, how does it work for, um, or maybe it's not considered that, but for Ribfest? Um, how does Ribfest pay a fee? Is I can that, answer that. Okay. So, Ribfest and the Agricultural Fair are... Uh, the organizer is a not-for-profit. Okay. So not-for-profits don't pay that one fee. But as you've just said, you know, types of events are changing in the town. They, you know, these things are happening in other communities. So having a food truck, truck rally, um, you know, we have an umbrella permit if you're doing something on, in public spaces, right? So that's $100 that covers the, the whole event. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have that for private property. So for a private property owner, if they wanted to do an event, um, they, can, they can carry that out, but we get into conflict that the fees don't match that. So there, there needs to be some work on that. Mm -hmm. I can also add that it is very difficult to enforce the license bylaw outside of the food trucks. It's very difficult to enforce door-to-door -door uh, no one comes and knocks on our door for that. Uh, it's very difficult to even enforce events uh, in private spaces because generally we hear about it after the fact. Um, so it's very difficult to enforce quite a lot that we have listed on the license bylaw. Yep. Um, so what I've seen that other communities have done is they basically they don't have a license bylaw. They have a vending bylaw. And that vending bylaw is for things that are important. So, like, important to council. So, uh, they are the food truck, whether it's on private land or it's in public spaces. And then what they look to somewhat recover, and it's mo mostly for oversight related to safety, public safety, and the use of public spaces is the, is the fee for those is really 
so that all eyes that run the operation of the town or supports first responders in the town can see that application. The fee is very nominal, but it gives us, you know, will they run their events safely? Um, are there um, escape plans? What is the security plan? Is it accessible? Um, do they have insurance to cover any damages? So, you know, that's why most municipalities focus on events using their spaces versus events using other property owner spaces. And that's why you see the, the difference. Okay. Another question, and this, the, now that I've got your Got you here. I'm going to ask this question because it was one that popped into my head uh, when I was looking this over a couple of days ago. Um, section 4.0, the itinerant amusement performers, day to week fees, carnivals, midway circus, that makes sense. Professional entertainers, 100 to $500, and the exhibition, 500 bucks, that's fine. I'm confused a little bit with that because could a professional entertainer be a busker? Does a busker, because don't buskers not pay? Isn't that a... Yeah, so buskers, uh, the definition is that they're, they're busking in a public space. And mm -hmm. so there is, we do not charge. We do not have a fee related to that. Um, when generally those events, like the wrestling event or something, it's happening at the Mariner Center. Uh, I haven't seen anybody show up here. And the Mariner Center is certainly, and I can't speak on behalf, maybe Councillor Dares could add to that. They're, they're not coming. They're already getting charged a fee. Uh, the amusement, which is, which is under the agricultural fair, again, last year, not-for-profit, uh, there was no uh, charge. We did, we did ask them to fill out an application, so at least they have a license just for awareness, but there was no fee. So uh, if it's not-for-profit, there's no charge, uh, but we like an application just so that we have it on file so that we have eyes on, on what's happening in the town, at least for large-scale events. Okay. So this doesn't include buskers because no, that was confusing not. to me. No. Yeah. And I thought when buskers are free. I remember kind of pushing that at the time. All right. That's, that's all good. Thank you. Any more questions? So Jeff's looking for direction. Um, I don't... I, if the intent, if the intent of the bylaw, like I don't know if it's okay or not, but some of the questions that, that um, <clears throat> Councillor Cleveland was asking are, are clarification things, and I know this is this can be confusing because if you have one thing in mind and you're looking for it in here, well, is it this? Does it fit in this category? That category? It might be that, uh, like the old signage bylaw, is is we need a communications tool uh, to to give to people when it comes to these these licensing. Um, bylaws just to make it easier for them to make it yeah to, to make it clear I mean yeah. if, it, if, if it wasn't clear but the other thing is um, should we be charging like this and, and my answer is I think it's part of what you were saying business isn't for it's not free to do business cost money to make money you know all, all those pieces we want we, we want the activity in town but we don't want it at the, um, no, we always want it, but not at the expense of, you know, our merchants that are paying taxes saying like, what the heck, nobody was in my shop today, I'm paying all these taxes, and these folks are not paying anything. So there, there has to be a fee. Um, I don't think some of the fees actually are doing as, as you know, what was suggested, which is halting you know, stuff from happening if, unless they're, you know, hundreds of dollars. But if it's a hundreds of dollars and it's at least a week, it's like you got to be, the money's got to be there. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having a, but way to some of your points, I, you know, we put those in. Like that's, that's helpful to staff and helpful to us to clarify at least this a little bit. Go ahead, Mel. Yeah, I, I, thank you, Your Worship. I, I, so w this came to our attention because we had a complaint uh, from a vendors, I guess you would call it. And the question I have is, um, I guess, first of all, from a staff perspective, does the staff feel as though the vendors bylaw or the, the licensing bylaws that we're looking at are 
are easy to manage and easily understood by the people in the community that are. Like, is, it, is it working for you is I guess my question. Is it working for staff? And then the question, the second question is, if it's not working for staff, how are there opportunities to fine tune what we've got here, make it simpler, maybe take some things out, maybe um, retool for a new era? And is, is that something that is meaningful to do? So those are the, I guess I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for a little bit of understanding of where, where is staff on this? You know, we have a complaint, we have, you know, council that makes policy, but like is, does staff feel that this licensing bylaw regime is working? I think there are portions of this bylaw that are difficult to enforce. Yeah. Um, and if I had to make a recommendation, it would be to remove some yeah. of those. Yeah. Um, I think that the, we can create one bylaw called the vending bylaw. Uh, that makes it very simple because it's one process. I think that we need to refine the types of fees because there are more people doing a day event or a weekend event. Yeah. So let's call it over a span yeah. of a week. Yeah. Um, so, you know, have opportunity for a week, a month, a year for those that operate something that, that runs uh, 12 months of the year. Um, we want to encourage events, and that's what Yarmouth and Acadia Shores is doing. That's what the Chamber is doing. And they want to use public spaces. Um, and that kind of spills into private spaces as well, which then generates room nights, which is the goal, is to generate room nights so people can stay and eat and visit the town, buy real estate, open a business. All of those things have occurred and are occurring with the events that we have. Um, so make it simpler. The process is simple today. Uh, and perhaps review the fee structure um, which, which I think is generally fair, but needs to be broken down into week, month, year. Excellent. Um, but that would be my recommendation. Excellent. Thank you very much for that direction. I appreciate that. So I, I think that, um, I think as a council, we, we just need to have a look at how we can provide our, our staff with what our intention is. I know my intention is to create a free flow of activity in the community, um, but also provide um, the, 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 the checks and balances that, that are required for the food safety, the food trucks, and that sort of thing, um, while at the same time um, threading that needle of commercial, of, of, of our tax base being impacted. So, it, you know, there has to be some, I think that, there has to be some level of fine. I don't want to see it thrown out completely. I want to see it simplified, and I want to, you know, and I want to see it reflect today, which is that, as you say, we're, we're having people that are coming in under the auspices of a larger group, who are coming in for a day, you know, or a weekend, and maybe the that the fee that we have now is not, you know, not appropriate for for the for what they're getting so yeah change but not throw out that's what that would be my suggestion okay thank you go ahead counselor thank you <clears throat> you know after a 35 year career in policing um when i was reading this i was thinking this is one of those ones that have to have in my back pocket all the time to refer to um and i agree that i think if we can streamline it or simplify it um it might be better because it, it really, it would, for me, it would, I'd have to be constantly referring to the bylaw to what do I do next. I also thought that it was rather cumbersome, um, <coughs> the part where, you know, um, the license can be ex um, revoked by a majority vote of members of the council. So you, now you're involving council, and then the person has an opportunity to appeal. And uh, to me, if you can keep council out of it, fine. Um, 
but I just found that it was really cumbersome. The whole thing was, to me, I just kept going back and thinking, what did I just read? And okay, well, maybe that doesn't apply to there. And, and so I really, I have to agree with, with Councillor Hatfield. I, I, I just found that if we could streamline it, simplify it, um, make the, the language easier to read and follow, it would work for me, I can tell you that. But, um, I just found that it really, really awkward. But thank you for the effort. I mean, I thank you. I know that just, just these things don't happen without a great deal of effort, and, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so does anybody disagree with simplifying it? No, I don't disagree with it. Um, but would you like a motion that we send it back to council with, or send it back to staff rather with instructions? If so, I will do that. I'll make that motion that we send it back to staff with the goal of simplifying, making it clearer, and perhaps updating uh, so it's more reflective of what we're aiming for. And I also really want to throw in the bit about uh, the daily fee uh, because so, I think that's important. So, so that's what I was going to When I asked if anybody disagreed, it was also um, some of the points that you had made. So we want to make sure, yeah. And, and enforceability, which Natalie enforce, yeah. brought up. So I think that if that motion is seconded and approved, I think that gives staff sufficient direction and appreciate, okay, appreciate the comments. Okay, second by Councillor Bell. Any more discussion on this? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thanks for everything you put into that, Natalie. Okay, Police Advisory Board appointment. And the recommended motion there is that Council appoint Katherine Davidson to the Police Advisory Board. Okay, Councillor Lesser. A second by Councillor Heather. Any discussion? We did talk to her, right? She knows this is coming. Yes, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Good answer. Good answer. She just got volunteered. Careful what you wish for, right? Uh, no, it'll be great to have her. Great to have her. Okay, honorarium and attendance policies. And the recommended motion there is that council adopt the honorarium and attendance policy as recommended by staff. Um, okay, so did you want to speak to that? Let's get the motion on the floor. I'll make the motion. Okay, uh, Councillor Dares and Councillor Heather. Okay, come on up, Chief. We read it, but just if there's something you wanted to share. Um, not specifically. Uh, is there anything, any questions about the, the uh, policy? Is it, is it new, updated? Like when I read it, I couldn't tell if it was there relatively was new or? One never existed previous okay, to this that's, day. Okay, that's so why I didn't see any markups. The, the intent is, is to uh, bring some consistency to the way that the honorarium is, yeah. is, is disseminated and, awesome. and around attendance and how persons can receive that money. That your idea? You could be the chief or something. I might apply someday. <laughs> yeah, I, just a comment that I thought it made perfect sense. I think it's reasonable, and I think it's something that should have been in place a long time ago. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so a little history, I guess. Historically, uh, back when this started years ago, um, the, the chiefs of the day allowed the volunteers to, to come up with their own policy and police it. Um, and it worked in the day, um, but I, I've since found some areas that we could improve and, and bring it consistent, uh, you know, today, today's standards. So, you know, uh, we've increased a little bit the expectations for people to, uh, you know, be in attendance. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not a huge leap from where we were, but it is an increase, um, you know, through the years back when I started long time ago, the expectation was you had to obtain 70% to remain in the, in, the, in, the, in the volunteer ranks. So through the years, uh, that was slowly petered off to the point where it was, it was too low. And, you know, uh, we need to work on a balance. And, you know, if, if, I need, if we need to modify this, obviously we can, but this is a good place to start. Good stuff. Okay, Councillor, go ahead. Is that... I believe the volunteer firefighters would also get, like, they're eligible for uh, plates 
and some tax relief? Maybe? That's correct. Um, so this would apply to that as well, or no? yes, it, it does. It, okay. it it reflects properly the provincial and federal standards. Okay. Um, so we we slightly okay. exceed uh, the requirements provincially and federally, essentially provincially okay. uh, to get like plates and provincial tax credit, which is five hundred bucks. And the plates are free. Obviously, you have to meet twenty, twenty, and twenty. So twenty meetings, uh, twenty training, and twenty uh, calls, essentially. And for the federal tax credit, you have to obtain two hundred years. Two hundred years. That's a lot. Two hundred hours. <laughs> Of, uh, of, of operational availability or working fires. Um, I'm working with CRA to kind of clearly define that because they, every person I speak to has a different perception of how that works, but anyway. You can keep the 200 years in, it's a great retention tool. Yeah, it would definitely, uh, we, well, if we combine some of our, our senior guys, we're there, right? <laughs> Anything else for the chief? Okay, are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Mandatory vaccine update. The recommended motion is that council rescind the COVID-19 vaccination policy requiring all employees to be vaccinated by January 14th, 2022. Okay. Councillor Wade and Heather's hand went up. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Jeffrey wasn't voting. Are you contrary? Did you? Oh, I thought your hand went. Oh, go ahead. You can still comment. Got to put your light on, though. Go ahead. But, but, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment um, that the vaccine policy was put in place not as a performative or a punitive measure, but as a public health measure. And I'm delighted to see the review that's been done by the CAO and the conclusions that he's reached that it is not considered to be um, an effective, uh, an effective uh, uh, public health measure to continue at this point and that he's got the staff on board with that. Um, and I think it's important to remember that it does remain true that the unvaccinated are at a higher risk of severe illness and death than those that are up to date with their vaccinations and that the rescinding of this policy does not in any way reflect um, uh, on the wisdom of the decision to put the policy in at the time it was the right thing to do and I think now it's also the right time to course correct and uh, I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. Awesome. Councillor Lesser? Yeah, I think anybody that uh, knows the CAO, knows that he had everybody's best interest at, uh, at bay during COVID, uh, during the high risk of uh, COVID, and that's why our tables are separated. We went virtual, and um, and I heard, you know, he was pretty uh, diligent in making sure people were following the policy. So um, to have a, you know, a recommendation that um, it's time, as many other places have, to rescind uh, makes sense, and I agree that, you know, at the time, it made total sense, and I think we fully supported at the time that it was time um, to make sure that our employees were vaccinated. And you know, as things evolve, I think it's time to rescind the policy as well. You know, it's funny with um, not to mention the fact of how many times the CAO did this to me. <laughs> Stop! There's a red line. There's a red line there, and I I, I would laugh, but I would I would step back. Um, but, but I would say this too, it's not easy in a situation where everybody doesn't have your, your thoughts or your opinions or even your research or your beliefs that, um, that you did what you did and in the manner that you did it. And, and I just want to say we, we appreciate that because you really, you really, really did look after the best interests of staff. Um, you know, even whether whether everyone agreed or not, um, you had their best interests at hand, and and you know, like Bell said and, and Derek said, the ability to let it go when we're when we're, we're okay, okay to do it just speaks to it even speaks more strongly to the fact that you know I'm just it's, I'm just here to look after the safety of, of staff. So um, don't even say anything because I know you get embarrassed, but. I really appreciate that because I watched it every day how you handled staff. It was much different from how you handled me. <laughs> it was 
Jesus. What are you doing in my office? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that poor man takes a beating. I'm done. <laughs> and he keeps on ticking. Okay, so we already voted on that. So we're, we're good to move on. Uh, all right. Correspondence, Earth Day Community Cleanup Grant Request. Does this go into grants? So your worship, <coughs> excuse me, um, as we discussed at a previous meeting, we'll continue to put these forward to, to, um, to council or through community of the whole uh, as they come in. But uh, the last meeting you did refer, you collectively referred um, several requests to the grant process. Mm -hmm. uh, I, shared a, I shared an email that I received from, from uh, an app, the applicant which kind of laid out that there's there's kind of a timing anomaly for that um, for that group in that our spring intake we moved back you know into April and our fall intake hasn't happened yet. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so they were anticipating applying in January to hear something in March or April in time for their event. And so the email was kind of about here's some information about our event the timing doesn't seem to work for us this year what do we do and uh, so you've seen that email you see the application um, you'll do what's what's wise to do uh, and uh, if you have any questions that maybe I can answer happy to do so okay thank you who wants to because we can do whatever we want with it. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite here, but I'll give you reasons. Um, I would like to take a look at this and have it looked at for the reasons outlined by uh, by our CAO. And the reason why the reason why I'd like to have it looked at, uh, as opposed to the other ones that didn't, is that there's a full there's a full actual um, grant application that's filled out properly. And in good faith, they were expecting it to be earlier. Um, and what happened, of course, is we changed our policy in this particular instance. And this one is going to end up falling through the cracks because we have a deadline of April 15th. And this particular event does, happens on the 21st through the 23rd. And so I'd, I'd like to look at it at least to some degree. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not even exactly sure what they're asking for monetarily. Okay, it's not a ton of money, but I would like to have it looked at if if it's okay with the rest. But it's that, again, that's just my opinion. Okay. I agree. Go ahead, Councillor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. I think given the circumstances that it does warrant uh, us, um, you know, looking at it and giving it some consideration. Okay. Um, it was fifteen hundred. I mean, I I don't even have a, a, a problem with a thousand given the circumstances. I don't think is anything happening in town. Does anybody know? To uh, council, to um, I guess Nick Hilton. Um, I was asking about the schools because I see last year they had done Drumlin and uh, Meadowfields and so I didn't see any schools listed for this year and I did ask him ab about that just uh, as of yesterday um, and he said certainly if you know if there was money coming forward that they would look at a school in the, in, in the town of Yarmouth so um, I think that that probably should be part of our our stipulation you know that we do have a, at least one of our schools uh, involved in that okay and as far as cleanup I don't think they're doing any area cleanups I don't see that anywhere it's mostly coastline cleanup and then folks bringing in their bags of garbage that they have picked up and cleaned that's my understanding from reading the the uh, proposal but I'm, I could be wrong Okay, so I, I, okay, so it wouldn't be cleaning up the town of Yarmouth. Okay, so, so this is, this is how, where my head goes. So for, for $1,000 or $1,500, 
you take that and give it to 10 local groups and let them do what they do. And, and if they bring their bag of garbage to the Mariner Center, they're not cut, cut off because that's the entrance fee, a bag of garbage that they've picked up like on the side of the road. You know, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, what, what are we getting? What are we getting for our money? I struggle with that piece too, but then if we don't give them money, does the event actually happen that they have the event to bring the bag of garbage to? That's, yes. I guess, so, the flip side. So, so what happens because um, what's, listed for, what's listed for what happens in schools, what are they paying for, for inside the schools and, and those types of things? That's that's what I mean. Like they're they're paying like the the thousand dollars or whatever. I keep saying thousand, but they're asking for fifteen hundred. Um, you know what's listed on there that it would be a cost for the for the schools. Um, I mean, it doesn't whatever you guys decide. I'm good. Go ahead, Councillor Davis. Well, uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm thinking that um, you know the main attraction here, I guess, is the shoreline cleanup. I don't think there's anybody in this room that hasn't enjoyed the shoreline in North County. And so are we going to get hung up on the fact that the garbage in town doesn't get picked up or because, you know, um, everybody here goes, I mean, I've taken my kids and my grandkids to Johns Cove and Port Maitland beaches and we've certainly enjoyed them. And uh, so cleaning up the shoreline in this area is as important to the people, the residents of the town of Yarmouth as it is to anybody else. Um, I know that last year there was some concern that, uh, or some, some suggestion that this probably should be a project of waste check. I can assure you that this is, they neither have the resources uh, nor the mandate for doing something like this. And so uh, that's not really um, something that we could pass off to them. And, uh, and I, I kind of applaud, you know, the group that is pulling this together and, uh, you know they've they've done a good job putting together a budget, and they, they've um, I think motivated a lot of people to cleaning up our community. And you know I had a conversation with um, with my colleague to my left before the council meeting tonight about picking up litter in a certain area of town that you know we're going to try and pull together a crew, and uh, but we don't need the money to do it. And this you know we don't we're going to try and do that on a on a gratis basis, but. Um, I'm really not concerned with where they get the garbage. If they're getting it off the shoreline, then great. I, I'm all for it. And I would be supporting a donation. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, I guess me too. Um, a lot of what they're doing, there, there was a, I, I had received, I had asked uh, Councillor Hilton uh, for some clarification. He's quite involved in this. And part of what he's saying is is that it has to do with insurances. So. There's insured organizations that assist in the running of the event. They're also spending money uh, on bins and tipping fees and that kind of thing. Um, it's marked as donated, but they're actually spending money on it. Um, and this, this came after they had put the thing together, but they have, it costs money to, to get the bins and to have everything kind of put away. Um, so there's that. And what he said about locally, is that Scotian Shores, it's Scotian Shores who normally kind of organizes the, the cleanups, all right? And she can't get insurance for roadside cleanups, which is why technically nothing happens through the town. But I can tell you for a fact, because I did it myself, that people through the town are doing cleanups on that day and taking part. They just can't be part of Scotian Shores because if somebody hurt themselves, there'd be liability issues. Gotcha. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so so that's part of it. But I can I can attest to the fact that I spent it was a beautiful sunny day on a Saturday that was a little bit chilly, uh, cleaning up bags and bags and bags, and there was a there was a crew uh, with with trucks with uh, um, you know F one fifties and that kind of thing with truckloads of garbage that were getting cleaned up and put so. I mean, the organization of that can be done kind of on the sly, I suppose. It's uninsured, but it can be done. And I, I really do think that it would be good for us to be part of it. Okay, That's all. Fair enough. Good. All right. 
Okay. You, Your Worship, just for information you have uh, for community grants, you'll recall the motion the council made uh, at the time we revised the policy was one cent from the tax rate, so you're looking at about $49,000 for the year, 23-24. Um, so just remind you what your budget is, and uh, as you know, that will be divided into two intakes, a spring intake and a fall intake. So 25 each? Sorry? Like 25,000 each? Uh, it doesn't need to be divided evenly. No, but that's, it's, 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 that's the whole year. That's the year. Okay. So, um, all right. I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm all, it's like the grants is hard because remember we said, if you walk in this way, you get 100%. If you don't, go ahead, Councillor Bell. I guess that was um, my question was, how are we going to allocate funding f if we consider this? Because as you know, when we go through a grants process, you almost never get everything you ask for because it's prorated and each individual around the table uh, assigns a score based on what they think is important. And I, so my concern is that um, this ends up being jumping the queue. And so how can we, I like, I mean, I have no objections to this project. I have no objections to the project. I, I you know, obviously I support yeah. shoreline cleanup. Um, my, again, it just always comes back for me to being, how do we, how do we, how are we fair? How so can it be do, fair, how equitable? How about if we do this like we do the other ones? So Jeff's got, to, I'm kind of looking at Jeff and going, can we? Give you each a piece of paper, write down your number out of 15, have 1,500 is the high and zero is the low, write down your number and that's what it is. Is everybody okay with that? Are you going to, did you want to, go ahead. Oh no, just I wanted to point out that I think the reason we went to two dates, one spring, one fall, was to accommodate those yeah. applicants that didn't fit in the schedule before. And so this is just, I think, just a little warped version of that exact thing. Yeah. It, that you know, they there was no intent not to meet the deadlines, but they just oh, didn't. Gosh, they're not trying to yeah, exactly. No. I don't think they're trying to jump the queue no. at all. So anyway, no. I just wanted to point out that was our rationale. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I don't think anybody thinks that they were trying to. I, it was it was a good application. It was a but we had to ask, we have to ask some questions, right? So good point, Gil. Councillor Dares, go ahead, Councillor. Um, yeah, and once oh, once the. Decision has been made here tonight, and if there's a decision to uh, to support this, I'm just wondering, Mike, can we do some advertisement on the town site, keying into this? For the event. Yeah, and and it's asking people yeah. to get out and to pick up their garbage and yeah. be part of that and bring yeah. bring their bags to the to the Mariner Center or do community cleanups. Yeah, exactly. Councillor Belt, did I did I cut you off? Were you did I answer the question sort of? Is everybody okay with doing it that way? Write a number down. I have yeah. ballots. Our finance guy can do the additions and. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I can see Jerry now. That's too big. <laughs> Thank do I have you. to show an ID or something? <laughs> That feels better. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to do it because it's fair. Yeah. It's, it's what we do anyway. Yeah. Oh, put them up there. I was going to pass it to you. Another year we won't have this because everybody will know about the, you know, the change of policy. Yep. Hopefully, nobody will walk through the cracks. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In this instance, yeah. it was easy to say, look, yeah, they did a budget, they, they was there. Yeah. Anyway. So, I, yeah, exactly. I feel a lot better. Like, I feel I, I, feel I just, like, Belle, I get, you get nervous about how is it going to be fair? How does it look to other people that, you know, ask for funds? How do you give it out? And then there's an easy answer. It's just do it the way we usually do. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, I agree. Or refer, right? The, ease, the best thing to do is to refer to the grants process, um, but because of the timeline of this, this is the best way to do it, so that's good. Got it? $1,035. There you go. Very beautiful. $1,035. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so the motion, we're going to do a motion, do a motion. to, um, okay, Councillor Bell, you want to make that motion? Go ahead. I will make that a motion <coughs> that we um, grant the Scotian Shores Ocean Shoreline Cleanup Earth Day Project, $1,035. Okay, awesome. Second by Councillor Lesser. Any discussion? We're good, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, contrary. Motion carried. Go ahead, <laughs> CAO. So, Your Worship, uh, we do have a, uh, a special council meeting following the Committee of the Whole. Mm -hmm. We should ratify that grant at that meeting. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, but he wants me to ratify this decision at that meeting. So there will be two, two items on that agenda. Okay, thanks, folks. So the addition, that's you, Councillor Heather. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to update uh, the council and the community on the community navigator position for the physician recruitment uh, retention for the community. Uh, since its inception in September 2019, Rebecca Cassidy Rose has been our community navigator, leading our efforts to attract and retain physicians. She has worked tirelessly to evolve the position, building it to the success that it has been for this community. As some of you may know, Rebecca is soon leaving this position and moving on to new adventures. On behalf of the town, I would like to thank her for her dedication to this position uh, and wish her uh, the best of luck in her future endeavors. And if I may, I would like to make a motion that we send a letter uh, to her indicating that. Second by the deputy. Any discussion? Yeah, I think we all want to say that. <laughs> Go ahead, Deputy. Well, more so a comment. I mean, I think the position is, is great. And I mean, the, the, the medical professionals that are drew to this area and, you know, the effort that went out to put Yarmouth on the map and just not to go and grab people for Nova Scotia, but to have local people in the chamber step up to make sure that, you know, we get the doctors and stuff that we need. Kudos to the chamber. And thank you to Rebecca for the job that she done. So thank you, Councillor Hatfield, for bringing that up. Okay, did I vote? Did we vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, so a motion to, um, okay, so we're just going to, yeah, let's um, adjourn this meeting. Motion, please. Thank you, Deputy. Second by Councillor Bell. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. And then I'm going to call a, a special meeting of council. All the same things, record of attendance and all that stuff. So um, the, first, the, the first item on the agenda is let's just ratify the, um, the motion. Do you want to make that motion again? <laughs> yeah, uh, that we give 1,035? Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks, Chief. Okay, thank you. Second by Councillor Dares. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. So Your Worship, there's, a, there's an online agenda. Uh, there are two, two other items. Oh. The, the next item is the appointment of a bylaw enforcement officer. So you met Jade Bloom uh, earlier in this meeting. And in order to have the authority to enforce bylaws in the town of Yarmouth, She's to be appointed by council, so we needed a motion to appoint Jade Bloom as a bylaw officer within the town of Yarmouth. Okay, I don't get—I didn't get that second one because everything went. This went down. 
Okay, good. Not just me. Okay, so the, the motion is to appoint Jade Bloom as bylaw enforcement officer. Go ahead. Motion. Oh, thank you. Yep. Second by the deputy. And just a comment, just a question. Um, will we be providing her with a uniform or identifiable clothing? Uh, she'll she'll have uh, she will have some identifying clothing. We've decided to go away from the full blown uniform. Mm -hmm. So yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. And your worship, the the last thing has to do with the town hall elevator. If any of you use the elevator, you may have noticed the out of order sign that has been featured prominently outside the door of it for a while, and. Thankfully, none of you have been stuck in it. Uh, we have uh, done a tender to do some upgrades to the elevator, uh, and the recommendation is that council award the tender for the town hall elevator upgrade to TK Elevator in the amount of $165,000 plus HST as recommended by the town engineer. And your worship, I will also say that the, we have received some grant funding to assist with that project. Oh, that makes me happier. Thought you were going to say 1,620. <laughs> so what are we doing? Demario, what are we, what are we like I said, a it's, work, eh? it's not a replacement. It's a... Uh, so essentially we're replacing the sensors that uh, detect the level of the elevator within that shaft. We're also replacing the buttons and everything that's essentially behind the buttons, the control panel, the warning. Oh, okay. All right. That's worth a hundred and something. Thank you. Problem. Okay, thank you, Councillor Lesser. Seconded mm -hmm. by Councillor Bell. Any discussion on this one? <laughs> Look, I'm hanging on. <laughs> All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. So that was the DeMario's you had mentioned. I thought it was something else. Okay. Good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, no motion to go on camera, please. Thank you, Deputy, and second by Councillor Lesser. All those in favor to go in camera?